In this episode of Brewery 101, I jump on a Zoom call with Lakon, who currently lives in Helsinki, Finland, but has hopes to return to his home country of Nigeria to start a craft brewery of his own. I was pumped to have this conversation with him because frankly, I don't know anything about the beer scene in Nigeria and was pretty intrigued by the stuff that he told me. With limited competition, plans to revolutionize the way that beer is consumed in Nigeria, as well as the requirement to use sorghum in the brewing process, made for a pretty compelling conversation. So let's go ahead and jump into this conversation that I have with Lacon about opening a brewery of his own. Yeah. So tell me All about right. yourself. Yeah, fine. Uh, my name is Lacon, and uh, of course I'm from Nigeria, from the western part of Nigeria. I've been here in Finland for the past 10 years. And uh, so now I'm, you know, willing to build something back home, trying to start this brewery. It started as, as a childhood dream back then, you know, when I was in middle school. And I actually really want to be a brewer, but, you know, uh, back in Nigeria, you always want to be like a doctor or a lawyer and all that. So all of those dreams just flew off. I went into computer science before I found myself in business. So these days, uh I mean, uh, marketing. So I majored in my in marketing in, in in the university in Finland. So um, oh, cool. So for the future, I just want to have this this nano brewery. And uh, like I told you, I I really don't have this brewing experience. But you know, I've heard from so many cultures that uh, you can mix very 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 good beers, but without the uh, business uh, acumen behind selling the beer, it's it's almost like nothing in the hand but obviously i want to have both i want to have that you know the 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 experience on how to the know-how the technical know-how on how to build bear and i'm trying my best to you know uh set up something on, on my own like the home brewing section of things to try things out for myself and uh also the business aspects of uh, aspect of things i'm trying to take care of them so uh if you would allow me to share my screen so i can actually give you this uh Give you more, okay. You it seems you have disabled the screen share. Uh, let me see if I can figure that out. Um, okay. real quick, I have a a couple of uh questions for you. First, okay. um, what what got you into beer? Okay, so uh, first I have to say I love beer, and uh, but more more importantly, I love craft beer. So when I came to Finland, uh. Usually, I was looking for corporate uh, for for corporate beer, which we which is something we are used to in Nigeria. Then uh, I quickly found out that there was not there was not many good beer here in Finland. So uh, I began to do my research. Then uh, I read uh, John Cox's book. I read about this great product, uh, uh, Boston Beer Company. I I believe you know them. So I read about it, then I uh, began to read more, and uh, I fell in love with I fell in love with uh, with craft beer, and that was how I got into into craft beer, you know, predominantly. But before then, I, I have had this interest in beer even before I could even drink it back then in Nigeria, because uh, you know, uh, uh, in, in my village there was this brewing uh, compound where they brew beer, this local beer, and I kind it kind of appealed to me like the procedure and the rest of it. And, you know, I just don't know more about it, but that was back then. But in recent times, I'll say craft craft beer really, you know, got me into, in, into uh, you know, thinking about starting my own brewery and also the business aspect of it is something that I really love so much. I, I'm, I'm someone that I really want to, you know, produce something, you know, we live in a world where everybody want to be in front of camera and the rest of it, but I just <laughs> want to do something and manufacture something and yeah, you know, something that I can really sell and also, you know, bring people together. And, uh, you know, I'm also thinking of the, the festival aspect of things, bring people together over a cup, a cup of beer. And uh, I mean, I believe that um, there's a lot of um, connection and uh, networking to make, you know, doing that kind of things also, but cool. yeah. That's a lot awesome. of things. Well, I think um I think I allowed you to share your screen. So if you wanted to share it. Okay, now, it now. Yeah. Okay, great. Let's see. Yeah, it works. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead with this one. And um so uh so for now, what what I'm planning right now is about 200 to 300 liter nano beauty. Can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh so so something like uh 
a pilot scheme in Nigeria. So nothing very big, just to test the market to see how it works. Uh, to try it works and from there we can take it for there. I think right now we have it. I've always told myself that I want to have the first craft brewery in Nigeria, but one is already there. It was uh established by a Scotsman who went to Nigeria just like myself in Finland, and you know he couldn't find a great beer, and it was like okay, Scott being Scots, they like to you know they like to do all this alcohol business, and it was like okay, I'm going back to Nigeria to establish this craft, the first craft craft brewery brewery company in uh, West Africa, and that was what he did, and. Uh, now they have expanded from Abuja, which is the capital of Nigeria, to Lagos, which is where I'm from. And uh, they're really doing fine. So I, I just want to start very small on a very small scale. And uh, and 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 so a little bit uh, introduction about the country itself. Lagos is where we are operating. That's our main market. The population mm -hmm. of the city itself is about 20 million. That's our 20 million? Uh, yeah, but it's a wow. mega city like uh, New York, <laughs> New York, That's Austin, than New and York. Rest of it. Hey, I know it's oh, really shit. big. You know, maybe it's not as wealthy, but big <laughs> still. Yeah. So the capacity is uh, two hundred liters, and uh, we are thinking of four fermenters for now. The, the suppliers we're talking to, and. Uh, uh, so let's talk about the problem quickly. Uh, I think the main thing that we're trying to solve is diverse, diverse taste, taste. So in Nigeria, we only have spe specific kind of beers, and that's what people can choose from. And um, uh, w when I was doing my research, one of the things I, I saw was that beer, beer sales was, was going down. Uh, obviously, that was a very bad thing, but in reality, uh, from... What my interaction with the craft brew company that is in Nigeria, their sales is going up. They are getting sold out. Why? And also the the cost of uh whiskey is going up as well. Uh, sorry, that, sorry, I, I just say cost. The the sales of whiskey is also going yeah. up. Why? Because people kind of you know they are now kind of preferring this uh high test if you like like. Mm -hmm. They don't want that usual beer that they used to drink. They kind of get tired of it. And it's all also very expensive altogether. So they're kind of trying to elevate their taste. And, uh, you know, they are willing to pay more if that's the cost of doing that. So so quick um, question. Um, yeah. I, I forgot to ask, what what is the beer culture uh it, like is it is it just macro like lagers or what what is the average beer that's produced? Yeah, it's it's majorly lager. Okay. Lager and uh, a little bit of stout. I'll say uh, lager to 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 stout is about eighty to twenty. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So um yeah, so they 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 all the thing that that we're trying to solve is the packaging problem. So in Nigeria, the the beer culture centers around bottles. Yeah. So like eighty percent of our beer beer is still pushed true bottle so in like kind liter of plastic of bottles or no very big bottles like um real bottles <laughs> big one like 600 milliliters uh 600 uh 60 cl yeah 600 okay. milliliter yeah so that's what we still use to push most of our beer and that kind of affect the taste it affects if it affects the you know the 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 taste of the beer and all that kind of things. They get broken easily and all that. So I think my business model kind of centers around that, where we're trying to use almost only keg to push to some of our um, partners and also the final consumer, which I'll get to in a minute. Okay. Absence of beer festi festivities in Nigeria is another thing. There is none for now. In Finland, we have more than I think ten. I used to attend some of some of those myself. So in Nigeria, there is none. So it's something we also plan to introduce into Nigeria for that line for for uh, yeah in the future. And we can also bring foreign partners into the into the whole things to you know come and sell their beer and enjoy the atmosphere together with us. So um, 
Uh, the solution, obviously, it's about you know building batches. If you want to, just to build something that 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 kind of appeal to you or that is unique to unique to your taste, we can always do that for maybe let's say a party or let's say a particular event and all that. And the draft system, which we also try uh, as part of my business plan, I'm trying to invest in this infrastructure, especially the the kegerators and the rest of it. So that will be you- what we are using. Are you yeah. interested in opening a production uh, distribution brewery or a more small on-site brew pub model? A production for now. Okay. For now, yeah. For now, maybe later we can also incorporate the the brew the brew pub model. So, so if you're so if the kegs are not widely adopted, um, and like you're mentioning, like with the infrastructure of having the the tap systems. Uh, basically installed on site at different locations what is the um i guess i guess is your plan to to help people get draft systems installed in their locations and then you would sell beer to them or would it be like you're installing the systems exactly so what we're trying to do is we're going to identify some of these partners it doesn't have to be everyone in nigeria for now we can mm-hmm. just go in you know softly so for example we can identify like five of them or even 10 of them then we'll get all of this infrastructure together we can loan this infrastructure to them we charge it like we provide a service to them you understand like ev- mm-hmm. everything is there the co2 the draft draft system and everything we also provide them uh, with a beer with our cake and all that for them to dispense this beer to their customer and uh, yeah. they pay they pay all of these charges to us and so for what, the yeah go ahead, oh, go just, ahead. Just, just real quick one thing about that that is interesting yeah. is that 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 exact um model would be illegal here in the states so i don't yeah. know if they're yeah i don't know <laughs> yeah, maybe, exactly. maybe there are regulations like that but um exactly that's the thing that's the thing because in nigeria the regulation is not uh it's not really that stringent yet. It's still okay. very lax around alcohol. I mean, you know, it starts from the fact that at 18, you can already drink alcohol. You can, uh, I think most of the regulation are stringent around marketing in terms of marketing on the TV, uh, in the schools and the rest of it. But how you sell your alcohol is not the problem. I understand all of, all of these tier system things that, that that is constraining you guys in the industry in, in America, but that, that is not a problem in Nigeria as far as I know. Yeah. Well, I mean, and been to be fair, like that was how the system was before. And then when really? it became a more, yeah, I mean, originally before, before there was any <laughs> regulation in the United States, it was just a free for all. Okay, and so okay, you would yeah. have these things called tied houses where the manufacturers, let's say Budweiser would go and install a draft system and basically say, Hey, we did all this for you. Now you need to exclusively sell our beer. And then regulations exactly. came in to, so that, you know, monopolies couldn't exist, but for, you know, an under um, developed craft beer market. I think that that's mm-hmm. a, a positive mm-hmm. to be able to help people put draft systems mm-hmm. up and get keg beer out. So Sounds exactly, good. Andy. Exactly. That's that's the that's the uh, loophole. I don't know if it, if you call that loophole because I, I really don't think there's anything. Well, maybe you just mentioned monopoly. Uh, but could you just explain more how that could uh, create a monopolistic? Uh, I mean, I, I just. That was just throwing that out as an example, but basically, if you oh. if you um, if you are the manufacturer, the distributor, and the retailer, and you have you know you have total control over every step of that process, you and you have enough money behind you, you can essentially block out every other competitor in the marketplace, and that's what you know. Ultimately, that's what like the big brewers tried to do in the early days yeah. of, of yeah. beer is like, hey, yeah. you can't serve anybody else's beer here except for the SKUs that we offer. So. It just, you know, it, it makes it more of a um, a free market. But in this case, where there aren't that many competitors, I think you would only be benefiting the the community. I agree with you. Yes. So, so that's that's the uh, opportunity that we're trying to. I'll call it more of, a, of an opportunity, not loopholes that we are trying to explore. Sure. Because of course, these infrastructures are not there, and we're trying to produce to be part of our um uh, like our investment so and we don't have to um you know give it to all of the customers and if a customer doesn't want it again we can always you know take it to another customers and all that so 
And uh, if a customer wants to have us for a long time, we can have this uh, this forward contract. And if we don't have forward contract and we have another customer who is, who is willing to pay us more, maybe we are willing to change also. So all of this depends. So uh, on the uh, on the solution hand, so uh, obviously uh, the draft peer system is, is going to be something we are adopting and we are helping our customer to adopt it so that they can, you know, uh, draft their beer fresh to, to, to get custom. So quickly, I'll go to uh, the strengths, weakness, opportunity, and uh, threats. So the, the 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 strengths that I I uh, I can come up with is the fact that we are one of the first mover, even though we are not the first person there. But I still think we are very early in the game. If we can get our hacks together, and we can benefit from the you know uh, the booming market in craft beer recently. So, and this is something that I've done a lot of research on, and uh, I'm very positive about. And the lean operation, the fact that we are not going to be bogged down by packaging, you know, the traditional packaging method, it's something that um, is going to benefit us a lot. Like, for example, we don't have to grapple with all of these bottles, bottle return system, which is very cumbersome in the in the uh, developing world where I came from. And, you know, I say that lightly. You have to be there to know. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and um, so... Um, our weakness, obviously, is about our experience. Like I've said, I, I've never brewed beer before. I, I can brew it in my brain, but <laughs> I've never done one before. I'll try it, but, and maybe in the future we can discuss that as well. And uh, uh, just a, a quick a quick note that I, I love your Czech beers. I, I used to have some of them here also in Finland. <laughs> nice. And I like and I like that you differentiated you differentiated yourself from you know so many other uh, breweries around by you know brewing something something like. Like that so shout out to you so yeah, you. um the, the this the second one is uh challenges in scaling to meet demand and as you can see i put it on both sides which which is which by this one i mean that i mean that i meant that right i mean that uh we never know what's gonna happen in the future if the sales jumps then scaling is a problem it's gonna be a big problem and uh you, you know like I, I read on your I, i've watched on your channels and uh you're also like in the in the middle of that, do, do, do you want to uh, chip in something? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there are a couple of things. One, scaling will always be an issue in this industry uh, because it's uh, capital intensive. And so you need a lot of money in order to, to grow production. Uh, and then the other aspect of it with your business model is that you'll need a ton of capital for the draft infrastructure. So um, I, I'm, I, I don't know if you have like a, a ton of money behind this project or if you're going to get investors and things like that, but definitely... I mean, I'm sure you've already run the numbers, but like any mm -hmm. any extra thing outside of just producing beer is just more money up front yeah. in hopes that, you know, you'll make money on the back end. Um, but yeah, that's just my two cents on that. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. So the, the, the opportunity is about booming alcohol demand. So like I mentioned the other time, the BSS in Nigeria is actually going down recently because of the uh, economic downtime in Nigeria. But the alcohol sales generally is going up. And this has been driven by the sales of, uh, you know, high end alcohol like uh, whiskey, cognac and the rest of it including craft beer. I know this because I've been in touch with the, the, one of the guys that is doing this in Nigeria. So, um, but even the alcohol says itself is projected to go to, 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 to increase in the future. And uh, also, you know, in Nigeria, we make use of sorghum. I don't know if you if you've heard of that before. Uh, yeah, so, I've used this sorghum is, before. Yeah. yeah. Ah, really awesome. <laughs> I don't personally like it, but um, it's a good option ah. for gluten free beers. True, true. In Nigeria, that's what we mostly use because of the availability in Nigeria. And um, does it's does, quite cheap. It, does barley grow there at all? No, it doesn't. We really? have to import okay. all of our barley. Yes, hmm. yes. So on the on the opportunity side is also the partnership. So we're gonna uh you know partner with some companies and um, most of this will be you know discussed later very soon. And uh, obviously the threat is the economic instability in Nigeria. We have a lot of this fluctuating, but thankfully most of like our you know direct costs are going to come from Nigeria rather than, rather than outside. After investment in the, in our fixed cost, the rest is going to be the direct cost, which we can locally source. Apart from maybe yeast and ops, the rest are going to be sourced from, from the home market. And also the labor is cheap. 
maybe in the interim we won't, we wouldn't we wouldn't really need so many people to 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 help out but obviously at the end of the day labor is cheaper in nigeria compared to western world mm -hmm. yeah and um the business model like i've said is keg only for now but we also you know uh uh we are hoping to change in this model as, as we move along but for now it's gonna be uh you know keg only we're still running the number to see how uh, profitable it's going to be. I have a partner that I'm working with that is running the number right now. So let's see. <laughs> so with, I mean, just to start off with, um, as far as yeah. profitability is concerned, if you're going to be able to brew on the upper end, close to ni yes. 90 barrels, well, I, I, that's the size of your brew house, but are you primarily going to focus on like contemporary craft beer styles, like ales, IPAs, porters, stouts, stuff like that? Uh, so for now we're gonna you know uh focus on IPS okay uh, and um uh, as we move along we'll we'll brew other kind of beers like lager and um and maybe stout also stout is not really that popular in Nigeria it's there but it's not popular so we are not gonna be very big on it but you know it's always good to have all of these uh, varieties so so that we can and also it depends on the clients it depends on what they what they are looking for, because we are going to be serving, uh, 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 and I'm going to mention that later, uh, because, you know, we have this culture of events in Nigeria, especially the Western part of Nigeria where I came from. And uh, the usual thing is that, you know, all of these bottles are sourced together, put in a very big, uh, you know, a big drums. And there's a guy there serving the beer, giving it out to people. So this is a culture that we're trying to change. So you have your, 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 uh, what's it called? Your event, I powered, whatever, as long as you're willing to pay us. So what do we do? We are going to bring in our infrastructure and we can dispense your beer. You don't have to start handling out BS, you know, like yeah. keys to people. No. So that's something we are willing to change. And uh yeah. So now depending on the uh client's interest, maybe if they want stout and you know we got this ahead of time, we can try to build brew stout for them. If it is lager, we can do that ahead of time for them. Yeah, I was just curious like what your the portfolio was looking like uh, okay, in, or, in order yes in order to specifically calculate uh, capacity. So okay, I, don't know if you yeah. saw it. I don't know if you saw it on uh, one of my other videos. I've, I've mentioned it a couple of times, but the way that you calculate the capacity of a brewery, the amount of beer that you can produce within a given time frame, usually within a year. If you yes. have three barrel um, fermentation vessels oh, and you have four of them and you're brewing <laughs> ales, let's say they take two weeks on average to move through the tank, you can brew maximum uh, about 300 barrels of beer per year, which is about 600 kegs. So um, as far as looking at the profitability, quote unquote profitability, or even just revenue, whatever the amount that you would charge per keg, multiply that times 600. And that is the maximum amount of sales that you could do with that system. Awesome. Awesome. Good to know. Good to know. And uh Hopefully you can send this uh, video to me as well so that I oh, can yeah, at yeah. least go through it again. <laughs> yeah, 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 it'll be uploaded. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So uh, I'll go quick, quickly now so that we can... Uh, so uh, this is our products and services. Sometimes it's hard to, you know, categorize some of them correctly. I, I don't know if Keg Rator in this case is a service or a product, but I, I think it's a, it's a service. But, you know, uh, Bear Keg, this is at the center of our... BI is at the center of what we do. We we will provide CO2. All these infrastructures are not there. Of course, we have the company, but people don't they don't draft their beer, beer, so they don't know any of these. So we have to, you know, get all of this, 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 this for them, you know. Like mm -hmm. you have to then the merchandise also, the beer festival that I mentioned the other time. This these are the things that we are going to, you know. These two are going to be further down the line, but obviously we are going to procure this. It doesn't have to be many of it, maybe 10 for a start. I've been talking to some suppliers online. It doesn't have to be flashy, just something that can dispense beer. And yeah, um, yeah. That is <laughs> that is um durable also. And um yeah, because we're gonna do a lot of moving around with it because obviously this. Events can be can be from places to places. We just have to move them around and let them do the job. Yeah, I mean, if you're thinking about 
just temporary events and not necessarily um, like in, like putting infrastructure in like a full draft system with draft lines installed into a business. And you're talking about like moving it from place to place. But yeah, like a little small kegerator like that could be could be fine. But then I don't know if you've heard about uh, jockey boxes. They are yeah. Like the, yeah, they're like the cheapest option yeah. to serve draft beer. They're pretty, pretty not low quality, but they're pretty like, you know, not fancy at all. They're very, very basic. They're just like a, a cooler with coils in it that beer runs through and you you have a tap and you fill it with ice so that the beer stays cold. Um, so if you're just for like an immediate, like temporary thing, it's a good option. But yeah. if you're looking to have like equipment at a location, definitely invest in some, yeah, more, <laughs> more solid kegerators. Yeah. Very nice. And also nice to hear the one you just mentioned. Uh, I'll look into it. All right. Moving forward. So this is our market. So shall I say our customers? Um, so um, hotels, like I didn't mention them. This is a possibility. If we, maybe if we can get one or two, we'll be happy. And um, one of, you know, we have a lot of them in, in Lagos, uh, top hotels, sport bass, uh, you know, with very good traffic, you know, we Nigeria is very big on sport, especially football. That's what you call soccer. So in these so, in these uh, sports bars, they're just serving the the bottles. Everywhere in Nigeria, everywhere. <laughs> just a few okay. places. Like I mean, uh, according to I forgot, Kev Kevin is the owner of Bature Brewery, which is the first uh, um, craft brewery in Nigeria. They were probably the first who came in with draft beer in Nigeria. And, you know, many people say it won't work, but now today people want to have their, you know, beer drafted because it's there's this experience to it that is different. And, you know, yeah. and um, it has now come to be associated with top hand beer also because yeah. most of these Quality. big commercial breweries, you know, they, they just don't want to invest in it because it's a little bit, like you've said, it's, it's more expenses on their parts and, you know, if they have to do it for one, they have to do it for all, and you know they hold, they 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 own all of the all of the uh all of the cost, almost all of the top customers. So if you have to do it all around, that it's gonna hit into their profit. This is not something they want to do, you know. So and um, yeah, cool. And of course, the the nightclub also. Some of them do have obviously, and uh, short let homes. We we don't know how this one is gonna work yet, but. We are, you know, looking into what is smaller that? cakes. So short light homes will be these homes that cater to like those ones you'll find on heavy MB. Oh, okay. Okay, got it. Yeah. So maybe if a customer wants something in the keg, we can always, you know, all this little keg, like five to ten liter kegs. We can have a, a few of them and have this contract with some of them. So if a customer is coming from abroad or in Nigeria diaspora, we want something, you know. Cooler than the usual like uh, star lager and uh, you don't know that like commercial beer in Nigeria. So they can always you know reach out to us. So maybe we already have a few with them and all that. So we just have to optimize some of this uh, you know partnership to kind of you know. So also Lagos International Airport is something we are going to you know look at and see if we can place someone there or work with some of the customers. You know, at the end of the day, let's see how that works out. But yeah, this is what all. Uh, there's one other one. Okay, the high power if, if events, high end events. This will be the ones I was I was talking to you about the other time. The where we have these events where you know rather than you giving out bottle to people, you know you can have a draft system that you know dispense beer to people and kind of you know elevate the drinking experience. Sort of you know I, I've always looked at that since I was in Nigeria back. I don't like that the side of that at all. But it's 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 the normal thing. But you you know I mean this is business. You can always you know <laughs> um, uh, propose something to customers, and you can be uh, uh, you know you can be surprised how they will receive it. But you know it's still an idea. We don't know how it's gonna go. But yeah, yeah, handy. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. I've got <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, so I just got an update. We've got uh, 10 minutes left on this one. Again, I'm happy to log off and wait the the whatever 10 minutes and then jump back on. Uh, but just in yes. case it, it gets close yes. and I have to end it just yes. so you're aware. Um, right. Cool. So, well, first of all, 
Great job on the presentation. Looks like you've done a lot Thank of research. Um, yeah. What you. is your, I guess, uh, what, what's your timeline on all, all of this? Well, I'm looking at six to a year. Okay. So maybe in the six months or in a year's time. So we, I want to get this done. Uh, of course, uh, finances is is, a, is an issue, but I'm not letting that deter me. I'm just trying to get my my business plan in order because obviously, if you can't see uh, what to do, then you cannot really begin to think of your finances also. Because sometimes, yeah. you know, you think there's a lot of money involved in all of this, but you know, it goes beyond money. It's also about you know. Uh, the know-how and all that. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, do you have any? Uh, do you have? I, I'm. Do you have family still back in Nigeria that you're gonna? Is that why you're going back, or you just wanted to be a craft brewery? Uh this will be the reason why I'm going back. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Um. So, I guess the, the point of that is, do you have any connections back there that that can give you a lay of the land as far as like? legal like status and um regulations that you would have to go through in order to start this uh not at all but yeah like i have people on the ground that i'm you know uh i've contracted some of these to for example opening a, a a uh what's it called a company account mm -hmm. and uh trying to you know inquire also about the regulations all of this I have done, you know, like we have this, this, uh, uh, this meeting the other day, I have this meeting with the other day with a friend and we talked about, um, you know, the, you know, um, how to, you know, get the licenses because obviously before you can dispense alcohol in Nigeria, you need to get certain licenses with certain, uh, uh, government organization. So we are on that and, um, Obviously, there is also this issue of you know corruption and all that. Like, uh, you, there are certain people you have to pay before you can get all of that, unless okay. you want your application to wait for almost a, a year, uh, even two years. And uh, I felt like, okay, we have to, you know, start this ahead of time. But to answer your question, yes, I, I have people on the ground that could do some of this job for me. Yeah. So, so yeah, I have no idea what it, what the, uh, the licensing and stuff looks like in Nigeria. So I can't speak on that, but um, generally speaking, like build out, depending on what you're looking to build the infrastructure in the brewery. Uh, usually, I mean, just as a rule of thumb in business, everything takes twice as long and costs twice as much, but um, I, yeah, I don't know if you found a location or a specific area that you're looking to, to start this in, but that's definitely um obviously the first thing that you have to decide right <laughs> true true so that, true that I, I can a get a longer. word in on that quickly so okay. for example because uh this is going to be like a uh a distributing company i don't know how to say that in, in your palace but i mean we are not going to be like a pack a a, a an on-site business or how do, sorry how do you put that like a business that is selling on sites like yours. What, yeah, yeah. What you I mean, you're a manufacturer, not a retailer. It's, okay, we are manufacturer. So yeah. in, in that case, I'm willing to start it from my from my property, and uh, obviously that wouldn't be an issue. Also, I mean, if, if it's so gonna be... so you can start the brewery on your let's say your your home. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So well, that's easy. <laughs> um, yeah. And then, so if that's the case, then that makes a lot more sense, but I was going to mention, and this is just, you know, I, I'm just going to tell you like it is. Cause like, yeah, uh, that was the whole point of this call is to get information. Right. So sure, sure. with the size of brewery that you're proposing in the model that you're looking to do, you're not going to be able to make enough beer to like make financial sense uh, on that scale. And so one thing, the unique advantage that you have is that you're in a really young market as far as craft beer is concerned. And what we saw in you know, the, the early days of this most recent wave of craft beer in the United States was a lot of breweries opened up with you know, a seven barrel system, a 10 barrel system with the intent to just distribute. And, and we're talking about, you know, that's what three to five times as big as the system that you're, you're talking about. And so mm -hmm. they found, you know, success in the market and they were just grossly undersized. So 
again, 300 barrels, 600 kegs of beer sounds like a lot, but on when, like, if you sold each of those kegs for $200 or I don't even know what, what a keg of beer would cost, but, um, you know, that's not a ton no of revenue or sales. Yeah. 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 So, so it may be worth looking into a little bit bigger system, especially if you don't have to go through any of the like major build out and infrastructure. Uh, but then the argument against that is like, you know, start small, find your product market fit, and then you can always add tanks and increase the system. But uh, just a thought. And then, yeah. Yeah. Um, right. And then once you get a timeline together for like, um, I don't know, uh, permitting or, or licensing and stuff like that, and you start ordering your equipment and stuff, do you have a plan for what you're going to do as far as, um, you know, brewing the beer, creating the recipes? Are you going to take that on yourself? Or are you going to hire somebody to do that? Yeah, that's, in fact, that's a very good, good question. And, and you know, and this is why I'm trying my best to also start on the side, to start brewing. I mean, the, a year is still a long time. Maybe it's going gonna, it's gonna to take longer, who knows? So I've ordered some equipment from China that I'm going to start brewing with. I'm going to try yeah. brew one of your beers as well. Yeah, I think yeah. you give us some of your recipes. Yeah, <laughs> So, <for sure. laughs> so I'm going to try that out as well and show you. And at some point, you could also come in and all that. So, um, I mean, the point is, if you're going to if you're gonna build a brewery, uh, in the, in 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 the, especially in Nigeria, I think you've got to know how to brew yourself at least yeah. in the interim, because the idea is that uh, most of the people who call themselves brewer in Nigeria are people who just studied say microbiology and they have interest in beauty and they've never brewed before just like you, you know. So uh, at the end of the day, <clears throat> maybe a. a an home brewer in 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 the West, let me put it that way, maybe in Finland or whatever, uh, could do a better job than we they will do. So um, that's why I thought I have to start brewing now. I have to start, you know, honing my skill and let's see in the future. Maybe I'll be able to get something out there that 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 will make sense. And maybe I might also have to, you know. Uh, invite some of my friends uh, i never know <laughs> you never know what the future will look like yeah uh, you know i have a few friends around there that made on, on the internet to come brew for me and all that but we'll figure that out for <laughs> when time comes but sure. uh going forward i want to start building something on my own i well, you know i've ordered a lot of uh, equipment that i'll try try to try, try to start with and hopefully yeah start with something simple i mean especially if you you know, this is your first batch, just do a, you know, like a blonde ale or something simple that's easy, that's quicker um, mm -hmm. than a lager. Uh, I don't know if you have like ferment or um, uh, temperature control. On, on, I'm going to get one. Okay, I'm going to so, get one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely do that. But yeah, just get, you know, kind of cut your teeth on, on figuring out the process and everything. But uh, yeah, uh, it's going to be a, a steep learning curve for sure. It's, it's the best part of learning how to brew is the first few months. Cool. Um, so are you, what are you doing to uh, educate yourself with beer? Yeah, awesome. So uh, I, I have a couple of uh, groups that I've joined both here in Finland and also around the world where I get all of this information. I follow a lot of um, YouTube channels, including yours, obviously. And um, what else? Um, of course, I still plan to also join certain, uh, uh, certain organization, like uh, there was this 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 uh, carry beer finance course that I would like to take to, you know, kind of educate myself on beer finance, beer, uh, sorry, beer financing, which I think is, a little bit kind of different from say your everyday uh, finances like uh, all these e-commerce and the rest of it because you have to deal with a lot of um, startup cost and all that. So I would really like to go into that and you know learn the basics and also see from the uh, business perspective if this is something that I really want to do. Obviously, it's something I'm passionate about. 
Yeah. And I'm willing to put some money into it. And before I go into it, I would like to know the ins and outs and what to expel the pitfalls and the rest of it. But well, let me paint you a, a quick picture. Um, okay. So again, there's a lot of differences in the, um, I guess, the economics of running a brewery in Nigeria versus in the United States. I don't know what beer sale, sells for in Nigeria, um, but here's just kind of my brief overview of what it looks like uh, financially running a brewery. And granted, I run a super tiny brewery, but I've been around this industry for a while and I've talked to a bunch of people about this. So um, depend, I don't know if you have any experience in business in general, but uh, like I mentioned earlier, this is a, a very capital intensive business. So it requires a lot of money up front to buy all of the equipment. Uh, and then when you were mentioning financing, I don't know what your relationship with uh, investors or financing or debt or anything is like, I'm very averse to it. Uh, so I cash flowed the whole, my whole business up to this point um, with a little bit of money from family, but um, I, I'm pretty averse to bringing on investors because there is a relatively speaking uh, low profit margin in this industry. Uh, so from like a, you know, an investment perspective, I don't see it as a great investment in the short term because uh, there isn't a lot of cash flow that's produced because you're constantly just putting the money back into equipment and ingredients and growing and all that stuff. But having said all that, um, the reason I was alluding to maybe scaling the brewing equipment up a little bit in the beginning is that with, you know, again, if you sold 600 kegs of beer, every single ounce of beer that you could produce and you sold it at $200 a keg, which is a premium here in the state. So I don't know if, if you could sell it for $200 a keg or what the equivalent would be there. Mm -hmm. um, that would only generate like $120,000 in revenue. Um, and with a manufacturing distribution brewery, the profit margin on that is, is maybe... I don't know. It's hard to say because it's all relative, but maybe in the like 10% range. And so that's um, challenging. But if you're also starting it on your property and you don't have a huge upfront build out expense, that could be, you know, manageable. But, but the reason I'm saying all this is like the expectations of what like money is going to be there. Uh, just, just be aware that it, it would be pretty low with that volume of beer. Mm -hmm. True. True. I think uh, you you are correct. Uh, I've uh, you know yeah. At the end of the day, I've watched a lot of webinars, read a lot of um, articles, and they all pretty much echo the same thing you said. <laughs> so yeah. what's your what's but, your goal outside of like outside of kind of like, I mean, I think it's pretty ambitious, and I respect the hell out of it that you want to change kind of the landscape of of beer in that area. But uh, outside of that, are you like, do you need this to be what, you know, gives you your income or do you, is this a side project? What's your, what's your goal? I think it's going to be like, uh, at the initial, it's going to be like a side project. Uh, I would definitely have other things I'm doing. For example, my property, I can do all of the things as well, like uh, fish farming and the rest of it. I can as well supply those fish to the uh, Starting uh, partners who kind of have the same, like, you know, fish is kind of complementary to, to beer itself because uh, there's this culture in Nigeria where they make this fish into soup that goes along with beer and the rest of it. So that's something I can do on the side. There are other things I can do as well on the side. But it's not going to be like the main thing that bring the, bring in the cash. It's something that, you know, I'm willing to just to just cash flow and see grow into something big whereby I can then have like a tap room like yours then then just kind of you know expand it and be able to sell on on on, on site and you know begin to make that cash because that's where the money is really yeah is that, that more know, difficult for you it, it is it, it needs a lot of investment like you have alluded to like if you have to like you know start um a tap room in a in an eyebrow place then you've got to pay for it it's a little bit expensive and, i mean from um, the um from yeah. the uh i guess licensing aspect is there um 
like is it because I have heard from other from other um, countries and and people that have started breweries in other places that having like a tap room where you sell directly to the consumer the licensing for that is insane. Um, but I don't know if that's true. For, for the the licensing in Nigeria's case, licensing is not a problem at all. It's 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 the least of the problem. In fact, okay, there's no cool. license to cool. sell. You just need to. You just need to have your, you know, your space, you know, and then um, moving and um, that's all. But the main problem is the, 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 the property itself, like it, they can be very expensive in, in, in a place that I would like to have. Got it. Unless you want to sell that kind of premium beer, beer to people who will not really buy it because they are still looking for that old time beer, you know, like, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. I think also one, one, look into the kind of the economics of, of, you know, how, what beer is sold for generally. Um, and you're going to be sell, selling a premium product. So it would be priced higher, but um, it, you know, like for instance, in the Czech Republic, the, the beer styles that I brew uh, on average, when I was there, the beer sold by the pint was like $2 compared to in the States, it's like $7 for an equivalent beer. And so there's a huge pricing discrepancy and that's largely based on the culture and, and kind of how, you know, how beer is, um, perceived. Uh, yeah, it's, how it's perceived over there. It's, it's, it's much lower price and obviously every country has their own economy and, and the way that it works, mm -hmm. but it would be right. interesting to see like, you know, if, if, if the average person is not willing to pay more than $1 for a beer, it's going to be a hard sell to sell them a keg where you're selling the the wholesale beer for three dollars a beer yeah right right uh, i think over here based on our calculation uh it's about two dollars but you know dollars is 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 relative from country to country <laughs> so, What's the but currency? if you can get it out huh what's the currency naira naira so So we could uh, get it out for max two dollars. So uh, then so again, about this is also naira for a dollar in USD. No, no, that that would be like uh, eight thousand eight uh, nine hundred. What did you call it? Did you say nine hundred or one thousand nine hundred? Uh, nine hundred and twelve. The conversion rate, at least on Google, it says that one USD is ah okay one one two yeah that's true. But I just I just imputed two directly, so that's about one thousand nine hundred naira. And again, this is relative. If you're selling in, say, for example, in the bar, you could get more. Right. If you're selling in, say, a hotel, you could get more. You could get double double of that. But if you, I mean, the basic price, like maybe. In in a in an event, the highest you can you can charge is about two two dollars. You know, okay. so it, it depends on who the suppliers are. Uh, which, I mean, who your partners are. Sorry. So yeah, all of these are things that we have to also look into to see which of the you know partner is more profitable that we want to do business with and all that. Yeah. So so that would be the equivalent to a two hundred and forty dollars per keg that the retailer would sell. So that means that you would probably have to sell it to them for, you know, $120 or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. Which again, that brings that total revenue number down. Um, right, right. But again, it's all relative to to what people- Yeah, it's all, it's all relative because of, of obviously if you think of the, the, the cost of di uh, direct product also is very, very cheaper. It's cheaper than what you would have in the Western Western world, like uh, uh, price of sorghum per kilogram. It's relatively cheaper here because we we make it we we have it locally and all that. But yeah, I understand what you're trying to say. And is, is okay. So, sor are you planning on using a lot of sorghum? We we don't have any option. That's the route we have to go because so you, it's so like a be like a policy. Them. What? Oh. It's, a policy. It's, it's like a policy. It's a policy that's been in, 
in place before I was even born. <laughs> Really? more, more than What is 40 the, what's years the ago. role? So the policy is that uh, most of the beers in Nigeria are brewed with sorghum. You can, you, if you want, you can, you can import barley, but it's quite expensive starting from the import duty and the rest of it. Because Okay. it's it's a deliberate action from the government to encourage uh, You, yeah, sorghum using farming. local ingredients. Um, Local. So. so that's interesting. Um, that's Yeah. going to be a completely different product um, that you'll, I mean, you'll, you'll probably have more information <laughs> on that than I do, but Yeah, true. um, And 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 to be honest, that also kind of feeds into the model that we want to adopt because we want to make sure that most of these things are local. We want to be able to be down the cost. And this is something Baturi Beauty has also been doing. They say it's quite challenging to to brew with with sorghum, but they found it very fa fascinating and have, they've, they've kind of adapted and it's really working. And I see no reason why we can't do that. Okay. So I'm, I'm just looking up their website right now. I just want to see what kind of beers they're Yeah, brewing. I can send it to you straight away. Okay. Okay. So they got a hazy, a stout, a lager, a pale ale. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> Cool. so smart. So do you, do you know if it's 100% sorghum? Well, that I don't know yet, but I'll I'll imagine that maybe some of their beer also have uh other some dimension of barley to it. I, I don't know, but maybe. Yeah, because my only experience with sorghum has been in a syrup form, a concentrated extract. Um, and sorghum, I believe, is is uh, not. Let me see sorghum. Um, I mean, sorry, I'm technically, just trying to we look at. we we know not not many. I think many breweries. I think no breweries can be profitable if they use barley in Nigeria. Interesting. <laughs> Well, Based so the on sorghum, the policy. the sorghum may, I mean, it's, if you're, if you're starting from, from the grain itself, it's, it, I mean, it's like a little ball. Um, I'm sure it would have completely different processes. So if you're going to have to use that um, and you're going to start home brewing, obviously get the principles of brewing down and, and figure that out on the homebrew scale. Um, but you may need completely different equipment even to, to extract the sugar from sorghum. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, I I plan on you know uh, bringing some down to Finland to see to try my hands on it <laughs> to just see how it feels. I Yeah. I, I also have seen a lot of um, content online about it. I, I guess not many viewers really you know are into it. So, Do you have access to any of the beers uh, from Nigeria? do you mean from Baturi or just any random Nigerian no, no, beer? just like like an average lager. Yeah, I can send you one. Um, Do you like them? Do you like the beers? I don't. Really? I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't. But I, I, I also don't think it's a function of what you're using to brew it. I, I think it's just the procedure. Well, I can tell And you from um, from my from my experience, and again, this is an American palate <laughs> raised yeah. on American beer. Uh, the flavor Okay. of sorghum is very particular, and I didn't care for it when we used it as a um, an adjunct in a gluten free beer that we made. But again, I'm sure if every beer is made with sorghum there, then that's going to be the common, you know, Come on, palate taste. for Yeah, for the average person. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. Um, yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, in Europe, we, we drink barley. And uh, I've, I've tasted a lot of beers around Europe, and I don't really like them either. Like, Really interesting. What do you like? yeah. Uh, what? What what beer do you like? I, I like lager a lot. I drink stout also. But, you know, sometimes You when I drink some of this beer... Is this character to it that I, I really don't like? I, it it just doesn't taste right. But most of the uh, craft beer in Finland, at least, are really great. They 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 are very flavorful, and uh, you know you you can tell that there's there's been a lot of engineering 
uh, uh, done on them and they have been refined a lot and it, it tastes really good. But most of the uh, main corporate beer here, I mean, maybe only one is, 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 is good. The rest are just junks. And I think many things will agree with me on that. What is, what's a major beer that you like? In Finland, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, there's one called Karhu. That's like beer. <laughs> beer. So, beer. Uh, I'm looking for a place to send. Okay, let's send it to you. Oh, yeah, I found it. Karhu. Okay. Uh, yeah, it yeah, has a beer on so, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's, actually, that's the Finnish word for beer. Okay. And, uh, and I've sent you typical nature and beard also. So I tend to like that. And there is one called Kayala, which I don't really like. Oh, Kayala. Star Beer. Yeah, like that. That's one of the most like popular beer. You might have seen it before? I feel like I've seen it before. Not, I mean, <laughs> I don't think I've had it, but I think I've seen okay, this brand yeah, before. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, European pale lager hmm. doesn't mention that it's brewed with sorghum or anything, but I'm sure that no, I think I think it's it's brewed with um, barley. Oh, okay. I don't think there's any. I don't think there's any. Okay, do you mean the do you mean star lager? Yeah, are you talking about star like uh, Well, well, well. I, I mean, I think most of them are brewed with sorghum. It, it, it would be difficult to be profitable without beer with, with sorghum in Nigeria. That's just a simple fact. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it would be very difficult. Yeah, I believe and, it. Uh, and I also have read a lot of um, you know uh, research about it that people have done, like talking about it. That, you know, like uh, also if you read some of these. Uh, Report about the car, the industry. You know the price of sorghum is always something that's that affects their operation and all that. So yeah. So, okay, interesting. Yeah, I, I'm after this call. I'm going to look into that a little bit more because now yeah, yeah. my curiosity right. is peaked. Yeah, uh, so, but, but obviously, Baturi Beauty, uh, I know very well uses sorghum, and uh, okay. that's one of the. Uh, uh, competitive hedge at least because it helps bring down the cost so that they can at least meet their customer halfway because obviously their beer is a little bit pricey compared to your everyday beer in Nigeria. Do you know what they sell for? Like what's uh, uh to be honest, I haven't has, but I have a meeting scheduled with the CEO and founder, Kelvin. So uh I'll feed you back in the email and okay. uh, maybe we can Run the number together at some point. Because my, I mean, I would, with what you're trying to do, if if you're using, if you're going to be brewing like more classic American craft brews, beer styles, then, you know, maybe the flavor profile will be, it's obviously going to be much different than like a macro lager. So it may not be as big of a, a, an issue, but I would be curious to see one, if like it, if, if you can make beer with sorghum that is, you know, competitively better than everybody else's beer. And if that's enough to kind of differentiate yourself, but two, what the price difference is between the two, because like you said, if, if it's not profitable getting barley in Nigeria, but if you could charge a pre enough of a premium that it would be um, equ like equally profitable then would that be something that is interesting? Like if there isn't a lot of barley-based beer in Nigeria, if that is a differentiating factor. Um, but I'm just thinking out loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get your point. I get your point. And obviously it's, it's something worth, worth exploring to see if uh, uh, it could be possible to still brew with, with barley and uh, be profitable <laughs> and use that to differentiate yourself as well and charge premium price for it. Yeah. That's, that's what looking into. Uh, or maybe at least since we are going to be brewing batch, batches, so in that case, you could have some in, in sorghum and there some in, in barley. And, you know, at the end of the day, you could kind of like um, um, 
uh, sort of like have different kind of portfolio of beers that 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 are different from the corporate ones. Yeah, I got you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do you, do you have any other questions? Is there anything else that I can help you with? Uh, to be honest, uh, most of my questions are answered, but uh, maybe the only one I like to ask is, is about it, it. It's it's uh, around uh, used and new equipment. Uh, do you think it's? Do you think it's? What do you think? It, obviously, you used. I think you mentioned in one of your video that you're also using a used equipment or something like that. I, I'm sorry. Can you say that again? Equipments. Uh, I mean, the beer equipments. Do, what what's uh, your opinion around getting used or new equipment? Uh, I would. I mean, it's all relative <laughs> relative to the amount of money that you have, but um, obviously, mm -hmm. new is better depending on where you get it from. Uh, but here in the States, we have a surplus of used equipment. I mean, there's like, there's used equipment all over the place. Uh, and so it's much easier to get high quality brewing equipment here than I would imagine it is in Nigeria. So I think you would have to do some research on what the availability of equipment is around that area. And it may end up being that the cost of shipping used equipment to you is going to be equivalent to or close enough to where you could just buy some equipment from China, you know. Mm. Okay, true. And then also true. definitely look into or ask the, mm. the other craft brewery um, what they use because that with the sorghum, um, extracting the, the sugar from there may require a different mash tun or a different process altogether. So definitely check with them before, before uh, pulling the trigger on anything. Yeah, I need to write that down straight away. <laughs> Just give me. <laughs> yeah, no worries. No worries. Take it down. Yeah, in fact, I need to write that down because uh yeah, I'll be meeting with Kevin and uh obviously he he's gonna also give me like what you're doing now is gonna give me a lot of uh, insights into the the bell the craft brew landscape over there in Nigeria and uh uh that's that's gonna be a big high hope now into a lot of things that um I might not be privy to right now since he's already on ground and he's done it he's, mm -hmm. he started with with three barrel, I guess. Now they have moved on to 15 barrels in Lagos. So um yeah, I'm 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 looking forward to that chat. So uh, I can I, I can use this kind of question to see if uh the if uh, there's a need for specialized equipment to kind of uh, you know extract because I think they take care of their malts themselves. They do the malting themselves. They 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 do the the whole process themselves. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. That would require <laughs> a, a whole different set of equipment. And so then, yeah. So then that's like two specialties together, uh, the malting side or, and then the actual brewing side. Um, and then the, you might want to, I mean, definitely ask them about all ingredients, but specifically yeast too, because I'm not certain how traditional, um, you know, yeast strains would deal with an all sorghum fermentation. Uh, I, I, if I remember, I'm pretty sure we just used our standard house yeast the last time we brewed a beer like that, but it may be worth, worth looking into, uh, cause I would imagine they're different sugar, um, composition in that grain as opposed to barley. Awesome. Awesome. I just put that down as well. <laughs> and then yeah. do you, do you have an idea about how you're going to source the, uh, the other ingredients like yeast and hops? Uh, to be honest, I, I don't, and that's something I'm I'm, I'm gonna ask him as well. Okay. I have them pe that pen down as well. Like I I want to sort of inquire about their supply chain and see. Obviously, I, I I'm believing that this is gonna be like a healthy relationship between us and them. Uh, we we also try to get our beer on top on their top. Let's see how if that works out. They they are established and uh, obviously and in his podcast he said they were you know usually sold out and I'm very sure they can use some some partners to bring replacement beer when they are out, out of beer. So, so, okay, so they're just they're selling out as soon as they brew it. That was what he said. That's awesome. Good for them. Yeah. I, I was gonna <laughs> I was gonna said. recommend that like you could even dip your toe into it and um you know contract brew potentially. 
uh, yeah. with them to get your, you know, get your bearings first. But if they're selling out of everything that they have, they probably don't. Yeah, have that, yeah that's the problem. I actually have it pinned down because, uh, you know, but when I heard the, the last uh, podcast, I was like, oh, <laughs> maybe this is not an option. <laughs> or maybe I could get some some uh, fermenters for myself. But, you know, the procedure is almost like the same thing. So, but I, I'm still going to ask him anyways, you know. Well, there is a benefit though. Like actually there's a brewery, um, uh, good friends of ours that started the brewery here in Austin. Uh, when they opened, they had another brewery kind of tagged onto their license. And again, this is where the licensing thing is important in the States, but they essentially paid for two, uh, two large fermentation ta uh, tanks that they mm -hmm. utilized the hot side of their, mm -hmm. their brew house. So the, the mm -hmm. wort production and everything, and they paid for those tanks to get their brand off the ground. And they essentially mm. like gave them the tanks as payment for being able to contract brew there. So could be an option. And that would definitely reduce the cost of, um, cost of, of start, starting the start brewery. Startup costs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 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 Yeah. We'll look into that as well. Um, anything that can bring down the cost and also speed up the, the, um, uh, or narrow down the, 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 the timeline. So, yeah. Why not? Well, why not? But yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I love all of these questions that that you you have sparked up. I'm gonna ask him about that and also feed you back so that you can at least yeah, yeah. Uh, you know chip in one or two things and uh, maybe at at some point we can do this again and probably run the number together. Obviously, I'm I like I said I have a friend that is working on the numbers. We are trying to run several kind of numbers. So when I talk to him, I'll try and get uh, you know the pricing, the how much they charge on site. Obviously it's different from you know uh, from uh, the normal corporate beer. So I like to get the definite amount they charge. Then with that we can run our number and see how it's gonna look like. Yeah. You also give us this this formula about number of beer that we can produce over a year if you're using 200 liters and the rest of it so we're gonna put all of that into consideration and uh yeah andy thank you very much i appreciate yeah, this of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so when's your um when are you gonna move back uh well you know like uh not now everything actually depends on this whole project uh if the project get off the ground the way I want it, then uh say autumn next year. Oh, sorry, we are here already. <laughs> I'm not used uh -huh. to the new year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Autumn this year. So uh yeah, so I'm looking at autumn this year, depending on how everything gets uh off the ground. But yeah, that's the timeline, hopefully. But if things don't go the right way, obviously I have some of my own uh uh personal finance finances that I want to put into it into this. I'm also looking at raising money through crowdfunding. I don't know how much I'm gonna raise, but obviously I'm I'm kind of feeling confident that I'm gonna raise something. <laughs> yeah. So I'll, I'll I'll explore that as well. And um yeah obviously I don't want to bring in investment like um uh, like you have said I, I also have that premonition and I think I've watched uh, one of your uh, content where you were talking about that uh, i think i don't want to do that as well so just want to go on in my by myself obviously if i have a friend that is willing to partner i'm going to bring them in and obviously we're going to make sure all of the contracts are signed and uh, everyone understand what role we're going to be performing and all that but just to answer your question i wanted this year but i'm not pushing anything i'm just going to continue to you know optimize my business plan sourcing getting all the facts together, equipping my knowledge and the rest of it. Awesome. Well, yeah. good luck to you, man. I um, That's exciting. That's really cool. And uh, yeah, give me any updates about the progress. And if you have any other questions, feel free to shoot me an email. I will. Thank you very much. Best of love for the new year, Andy. Yeah, of course, you too. And, 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 and keep, yeah, and keep the, the videos coming. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I will. All right. Go yeah. have some fun. Have a nice yeah, you day. Do, you do the same. Have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye. If you all enjoy seeing these brewery one-on-ones, let me know in the comments. And if you are interested in jumping on one of these calls to chat about a brewery concept, opening a brewery, or talk about a brewery that you currently run, feel free to email me at andy at tanglefootbrewing.com and we can schedule a call. Thanks for watching. Cheers.